Hi, I'm Bishop Greg Rickle, and we are here at the FAN offices. FAN uh, stands for Faith Action Network, and our topic today is advocacy for people of faith. And uh, we have representatives from FAN uh, to talk about that topic, and also from Earth Ministry. We'll start with having everyone introduce themselves. My name is Jessica. I am the Outreach Coordinator for Earth Ministry, and we do specifically faith and environment advocacy and outreach. My name is Jesse Dye, and I am Program and Outreach Director of Earth Ministry, which is an ecumenical organization, and I'm an Irish Catholic. <laughs> Paul Benz, uh, Co-Director at FAN, primarily for uh, Program and Policy. Elise DeGoyer, Co-Director here at FAN for Administration and Finance. The question I get all the time, I hear it a lot from parishioners, that they have this belief that churches and their uh, pastors should not be speaking uh, to politics. Now, my flip answer to that is, well, we invented politics, you know. The church, <laughs> so so what, I don't know how you think we can stay out of it. But, but, uh, but uh, you know what they're saying. You know what they're uh, saying. And what, what would each of you say to that? Well, we're asked it quite a bit as well. I want to assure you there is a separation of church and state. But it is absolutely not only appropriate, but required that people of faith take a moral stance in issues. The way I see and uh, read our founders was that the one was not to become the other. Exactly. But not that they would not speak to one another. Right. Mm -hmm. Or challenge one another. I've been down at the Capitol various times. Most recently was testifying for the Carbon Pollution Accountability Act. Mm -hmm. And I wrote down with Reverend Marilyn Cornwell. We both spoke up and uh, me as a young woman of faith and her mm -hmm. as uh, clergy. Yeah. And um, they took notice. They certainly took notice and we were approached afterwards and thanked for bringing that moral voice to the table. We are called by our faith to speak uh, on behalf of the things that we think must change in our society uh, based on our faith. And if we don't do that, we're not really uh, living into our faith. What is the word, poli what's the root word in politics? Yes. It's polis. polis. Right. And what is the polis about? But about having in involvement and engagement by all the parts of that community about how should our, how can our community thrive? Mm -hmm. Secondly, so what's the root word in advocacy? It's literally, in Latin, to call. Mm -hmm. Well, I think there's something about uh, the Episcopal faith um, that has to do with that three-letter word, that four-letter word, call. Mm -hmm. And I think it's related right to the waters of baptism. Mm -hmm. You know, um, baptismal vocation, vocare, yeah. advocacy. All right, yeah. It's all about what we are called to be. Yeah. Having grown up in the church, I... Uh, think that that's really where I found my moral grounding and talking to other people I can see it come alive and it's kind of making those aha moments to connect between faith and environment and seeing that that's some part of our tradition that is yearning to be revitalized. For me it's clearly part of what Jesus in his solidarity with the poor and his walking with people um, on the margins we're, we're called to do the same and to walk with them into legislative appointments and calls of power. <laughs> Jesus was uh, mired in politics and in fact uh, brought to his demise by politics. So I mean I think uh, for, for it's, it's almost uh, absurd to say we're not involved in it or we do or that we shouldn't be. Mm -hmm. yes. Bishop Rickle, you had a uh, excellent reputation as an environmental steward and I wondered what led you to that. I was mentored by people who had the heart of advocacy. A person asked me to go to an Earth Charter meeting uh, in Geneva. I was so moved by the people of faith that were there. The man who said, you can drive your SUVs in the U.S., but meanwhile, my island is sinking. Right. And the field I used to play soccer on is now underwater. Yeah. And my people can't uh, farm where we used to farm. To me, I just thought um, there's got to be more to the call uh, to be a Christian. I'd ask for those who belong to a church, to a parish, to look at Earth Ministries website and bring their parish into our Greening Congregation program. This is a program where they learn, first of all, the faith formation behind 
environmental stewardship. Then they step into significant choices for uh, sustainability in their own parish, conservation, uh, water, safe chemicals, uh, and then they step into community involvement and advocacy. Can they join in any way as individuals? Sure. Earth Ministry is supported by our individual members, mm -hmm. and they're wonderful. I would ask for people to think about their faith. Somewhere in the Book of Common Prayer, mm -hmm. there is the affirmation of baptism service. And in that, I, I believe that there are five things that the person kind of pledges to do, right? Correct. Come to church, you know, listen to God's Word. Yeah. And then the last one, I think, is to strive for justice Just and peace, peace in all the earth. Yeah. So connect that to one issue. And I, and I would ask for, the, for them to just think of a very basic issue like food. Mm -hmm. And to think of themselves as God's advocates with their hands, uh, one hand bringing food uh, for the local food bank, and the other hand to pick up uh, their phone <laughs> and to use their hand of advocacy and call the 1-800 number. It's a, a toll-free number, legislative hotline number, 562-6000, and say, I am willing to support funding for the state-funded food programs. Easy to do. Pick up the phone. Do it. You know, finding your passion. You know, who, who are you called to serve? I know there are some passionate advocates among Episcopalians and all of our denominations and interfaith groups and um, to just make that connection between real people and policies I would encourage people to join FAN whether as an individual or as a faith community um, right now we have nine Episcopal churches as part of the FAN network we know there are hundreds and we're just stronger together I would really encourage people to not doubt the power of your voice as a, as a person of faith, uh, especially young adults. When you speak as a person of faith, you have the backing of your community. That's really not something to uh, discount. I think that's something that I've seen increasing too, is my generation, young adults, really desiring and craving justice. And we're fed up with sitting on the couch. We wanna, <laughs> we wanna go get our boots dirty and dig in and speak up and take action. There is uh, no reason for people of faith not to be uh, greatly informed and uh, to really learn. So I think the one thing I'd ask uh, people to do is just pick whatever it is uh, that you've heard that uh, you really want to know more about and, and invest <coughs> enough time and intention in learning it. And then I would say, see how you're being called to advocate to change it.